The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Dean Wilson with the Turner Foundation. Welcome, Dean. Thank you. Good to be here. So glad you're with us. That's great. Now, a little birdie told me that your grandfather actually founded the Turner Foundation. Why don't you tell us a little bit about him? He was, a, he was an interesting and wonderful man, uh, born in 1916 in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Oh, gosh. And came to Canada when he was nine and then ended up in Southern California. He was actually a traveling um, tent evangelist oh. in Michigan in the 1940s. Wow. So he did tent meetings and then he ended up marrying the organist, oh. which was my grandmother. <laughs> and they ended up in Southern California and he... Um, he developed. He was a, he was a minister at heart, but he developed a passion for affordable housing, and he built a retirement community um, in Riverside in, in 1958 wow. that was kind of ahead of its time. And, yeah. And so I grew up driving around on the golf cart with him, and he was Reverend Turner to all the low income senior citizens oh. who lived there. He actually he did this little inspirational um, commentary in the morning when they that were that was piped into every apartment. Oh gosh. So we had 200, 220 apartments and these old ladies would have this piped in their little How morning inspiration from Reverend Turner. So I grew up with him and he, you know his passion was to serve people. Uh -huh. and, and I think that's what we want to continue to be about. And he had this, it was an interesting model that he created because it was, it was housing, but it was a lot more. Mm. There was a restaurant, there was a band. I remember this band they performed. Gosh. <laughs> there was a hair salon. There was, so he served these people in any way. In fact, I read the newspaper one time. He was quoted as saying, anything I can do for them, I want to do it. Mm. And then he really lived it and, until the day he died. And, and we've just tried to carry it on. We're now in our 61st year. And we're just trying to carry on his legacy of, of caring for people Primarily through the vehicle of housing, but, okay. but it's uh, it's a great legacy. And so, primarily for seniors, it's now we've actually about 15 years ago when we moved to Santa Barbara, we we changed it to just broaden to all low income people. Okay. So we buy, uh, we own and operate low income apartment communities on the west side of Santa Barbara, and we provide programs and services there for the folks. So this summer. Um, there's a day camp, for example, for the kids. So an oh, average oh. of 40 or 45 kids every single day have a free day camp. They go kayaking, they do art, they do music, they wow. do educational stuff, they do. So that's one way we can care for the residents. And so we, we're based on those prop, at those properties on the west side. Okay, so you, so you have that one group of properties on the west side right, right now. Right. Do you still have anything down in Southern California? No, nothing, okay. nothing further south. Uh, so we really, we, we serve actually in three ways. Housing is one, uh -huh. facilities like community centers, mm -hmm. and then programs and services. So we have the ability with, with my grandfather's vision to, to, to serve people. And we try to keep it simple for guys like me. Oh, keep it gosh. simple, let's serve people. <laughs> so you actually put on uh, programs. Yeah. So I, w one of the things when we bought the properties here, one of the questions I asked myself was, what do my kids get? The kids that are born into maybe more difficult situations wouldn't get. And I made a list. And it, it ended up being a long list from homework help and tutoring, uh -huh. art, music. Uh, these kids right now are writing music in our community center. I mean, not only are they learning multiple instruments, they're actually writing songs and they're doing music videos. That's what? something my kids don't yeah. even get, actually. Oh, my god! <laughs> but, yeah, so we, we, we just, and gardening, gardening, summer programs, they do field trips, they go to the mountains, they go to the beach, they kayak. So what can we do to serve the people who live in these communities? And what happens is, obviously, number one, they're a little bit shocked. 
Like, you know, this doesn't happen at the normal C grade apartment complex. Yeah. But, but also, the, the, just the quality of life, there's a sense of community that's built. People want to stay. Um, people tend to behave better. Um, right. and, and, and in these kinds of complexes, typically, there's a lot of moving around. There's yeah. high turnover. People are always, we, we see turnover go down. We see occupancy go up. And, and we see a sense of community because people are around and they get to know each other. And, and they're not as isolated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because isolation's right. typically not a good thing. So, 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 you know, providing those programs and services, we want to build community and make life better for people, and that's what we do. Gosh, what a wonderful thing to do! Now, what about your dad? Is he involved, or was he? He is. He he still is. He he's the executive director. He, my dad was a Presbyterian pastor for forty oh, years, okay. um, and then took over the foundation and runs it today. And so he's a pastor at heart, and, and he's kind of carried on the, the tradition. And so you're working with them Yeah, as well. I help out. Over the last 20 years, I've done different things in my career, but I, I help out, and I'm involved as much as they let me. Gosh, <laughs> that is so, so great. So now the Turner Foundation is a nonprofit 501c3, right. correct? Uh-huh, public charity, yeah. Okay. 501c3. And so um, probably on your website, a person can go to your website and click the Donate Now button? They could. If they were so moved, <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> yes, we do, we do receive support in the community. We haven't, over the, over the 60 years, we, we didn't do, haven't done a ton of fundraising, but with the more opportunities that we have, um, you know, we've got all kinds of dreams that it would take another program for me to share all of them with you, but we want to do a college scholarship fund. Oh. We have a whole list of things that we'd oh. like to do. So... People who want to partner with us financially, we welcome it. We have, we've got a number of partners in town that have come alongside us. And, um, oh, that's great. So, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. So a person, when they go on your website, they could also find out, you know, like maybe how to get into the housing or how to be a part of the organization, how to contribute. Yes. Um, it's all there at theturnerfoundation.com. And yeah, there's information on programs. You know, we the, the the good news and the bad news, I guess, is we're always full because there's not a lot of complexes, you know, at this level for, for folks that have these kind of programs and services. They just don't really exist. So we, we are we are full, but but there's you know, a unit opens up every now and again. So we love uh, you know, especially, you know, we, we just love caring you know, for these people, and especially the kids. I mean, we mm -hmm. love having kids. We have we have adults, though. We have people with all kinds of situations, and we and, and one of the things about C grade apartments is they, you know, they're they're it's a little bit on the margins where people who are maybe coming out of a difficult mm -hmm. home situation or coming out of homelessness, mm -hmm. or you know something's happened in their life and it's, you know, and, and they, but they need a place to live. And housing, as as you know, is an issue around here, so we try to help that, but we do it with trying to serve them in a lot of other ways. So What a model you've created. My grandfather, yeah. yeah <laughs> I won't take credit for it. Yeah. We're trying to build on it. We're trying to build on it. Yeah. I think it's genius. I think when you when you when you have somebody live with you in a sense they're mm -hmm. when they're housed with you, the way you can the ways you can love them, you know, even if it's a coat of paint or a new mm -hmm. refrigerator or flooring or flowers when we when we, I, I did this a little bit in Dallas as well, but every time I'd buy these complexes, one, one of the complexes I bought, there's no flowers, you know, and they say don't plant flowers, they'll trample them. Don't paint, they'll graffiti. Oh, we did the opposite. <laughs> we painted, we planted flowers, nobody trampled them. There's a sense of dignity. <laughs> yeah. These are wonderful people, and you can bring out the best in them versus seeing yeah. the worst. And so we try to tr change the climate from despair and hopelessness, and this is the only oh, place we gosh. can find to live to... This is a special place, and, and we get to live at the village. We get to live at the White House. That's the kind of thing that we like yeah. to see happen. So, Do you know if any other areas in the state or the country have anything like this? I think, you know, here and there I've heard of, of little things. Mm -hmm. um, in, in Dallas I've heard of a couple things similar. Uh -huh. uh, but I think it's a unique, powerful model. And frankly, it works economically. You know, if, uh -huh. I, when I went to Dallas, we did this for-profit and with like-minded investors who were interested in real estate, but also wanted to have an impact. Oh, you're right. And it works because if you think about it, if your occupancy's up and your turnover's down and your yep. problems are down. I mean, I remember one time I was at the village, I officed at the village for three years and we had a tire slashing over the weekend. Oh gosh. So I just called them into my office. I'm right, I was right there. And I said, hey, we, we like you, but I held up my clipboard with all the people that were on the waiting list mm -hmm. wanting their apartment. And I said, you know, 
we just don't behave like that, like yeah. here. So I don't know who did it. I don't care, but it can't happen again because I got too many good people who want your apartment. We want you to stay. But, but what we saw and what we've seen over 15 years here and, and beyond is behavior improves. And if you develop community and you care mm. about them, you know, it just, it's amazing what can happen. Gosh, I bet you have seen story after story after story. Maybe you'd share one with us. Yeah. In um, addition to that cool one that you just shared. Well, and I'll, I'll, tell, uh, I'll tell a story about my favorite, one of my favorite redheads other than my kids and you. <laughs> uh, but there was a lady named Linda Wilson who lived at the village. Um, the residents had asked to have, they wanted to have a little Bible study, and so they started one. The residents mm -hmm. did, and I was there, and one day this lady came in, and, and she shared her story. The purpose of the meeting was really to share stories. What's your story? Tell me about your history. Everybody's got a story. So she shared, and she ended up sharing about how she had gotten a diagnosis. And, and she had, in her words, she told me, she said, Dean, I've done everything. I mean, she had she'd done everything. She had beaten up her body a little bit, and she had burned a lot of bridges. But she came to this group. She shared about, you know, that she had been given a diagnosis of months to live. And because there was that community and that little group, she had a place to share it. Mm -hmm. And what happened over the next, she ended up living like two years or something. Oh. The residents rallied around her. Oh. They're taking her to her appointments. They're cleaning. Oh. They're bringing her food. They're caring about her. And so here's a lady who burned every bridge, was living in isolation in that apartment. Hmm. And all of a sudden, she was part of a community yeah. of caring. And so I have this picture. When she, she passed away, they had actually a service at the Ocean Hills Loft on State Street. But, but I had this picture of, here's a story of a woman who probably would have just died alone. Yeah. And it was her own fault at some level. I mean, it was self-inflicted, you know, wounds. Sure. But, but here's a woman who didn't, who, that wasn't the end of the story. The, the story got to change because this community embraced her and loved her. And it didn't matter what she did. It was a, it was, it was a community of love. And all of a sudden, her, the end of her life got to be way different yeah. than it would have been. So I love that. If we can, if we can touch, you know, one Linda Wilson's worth it all. Oh, yeah. but, but that's what we're looking for. We're looking to bring hope and life and love and caring to, to, to folks that, that, you know, might not be experiencing that in their life. Gosh. So Linda Wilson's my story. Linda Wilson. I got 10 more. I don't Gosh. have time. I don't think we have time. <laughs> well, oh, gee. Yeah, we have a couple minutes left if there's anything else that you'd like to tell the audience. Yeah, well, I just, you know, our message at, at the Turner Foundation is service. And, and, and one of the things that I've discovered a little and I want to learn, I'm trying to, we're trying to teach our kids, but, but I think is one of the messages of my grandfather mm -hmm. is that there's a lot of life that comes when you serve other people. Mm -hmm. And I know that you, that's, you do this show so you know that. But there's, you know, you, I, in my experience, you're never more alive than when you're giving your life away yeah. to something, to someone. So whatever it is, you know, whatever, wherever you're plugged in, I mean, I guess my message is, you know, serving, laying down your life for somebody else mm -hmm. in small ways, in big ways, in medium ways, whatever it is, I just think there's tremendous life there. And so there's no boredom there. There's no boredom in service. Yeah. There's life and joy and peace. So that's the message of the Turner Foundation. That is great. And I loved what you said, a community of love. That's the goal. That's the goal. Gosh, yeah. what a shining example you are for all of us. Well, I don't know about that, but thank you. And all you. the folks that you work with and your grandfather and your father. And that's right. And we have a lot of volunteers. We've got 11, 12 on staff oh. that just do a tremendous job. They're down there every day with these kids. There's tutors, oh, okay. there's volunteers, there's Partners in Education works with us. Oh, that's cool. So we have so many people that are involved on the ground loving these kids that it's it's oh, a goodness. joy to watch. So they can go on the website and find out how to volunteer. Yeah, we'd well. love it. If, yeah. if people are interested in tutoring, yeah. but there's lots of different ways to get involved. If you like gardening and you want to come down yeah. and work you know, we have a little garden down there. If you, if you're, whatever your interest is, we'd love right. to love to have. Well, Dean, people. thank you so much for all the good work that you do for so oh. many people. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, and thanks for being on our show today. Anytime. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>